So you want to auto populate cells based on a value selected from a drop down list in another cell. So at the moment, if I specify a customer here, I need to type all their address details in the rest of this address block. But what I want to be able to do is have a drop down list of customers here, and then it automatically to pull this information on this sheet into the invoice. So let's see how we can do this. First of all, you need a list of customers, obviously. And you can see here, I've got the relevant column headings. And then directly underneath, I've got my customer details. So we're going to house this data in an Excel table. So to do that, click in any cell in your data, go up to the insert tab on your ribbon, and click on this table button. You need to tell Excel that you do have headers in your table. So tick that little box and then click on OK. You then need to give the table a name. You can do that on the table design tab on your ribbon. If you can't see it, it means you've clicked outside your table. So you need to click back in it, click on table design and your table name box is over here. So I'm gonna call this customer list. Cannot have a space in a name, but you can use an underscore. Press enter to confirm the name. Now, in order to have a drop down list of names in this invoice address block, your first step is to click into an empty cell in this customer list sheet, type equals, and then select all the customer names that you currently have in that list. Doesn't matter if you have one or 20, just select the names that you currently have. And you should see that it creates this formula for you or this reference to those cells. So it's the name that you gave the table and then in square brackets, the name of the column. Now what you're gonna do is copy that and then you can just press enter and delete any cells that are showing values. Then you need to go to the formulas tab on your ribbon and you need to go to define name. I'm gonna create a named reference to that column in our table. And I'm going to call this name customer underscore drop down. And then what you do in the refers box is you paste in that reference to that column. Click on OK. And then you go back to your invoice template sheet. You select the cell that you want the drop down list in. So that's this cell in this example. You go to the data tab on your ribbon. You go to the data validation button, and that's in the data tools group. It's got a tick and a no entry symbol on it. Click on that. On the settings tab, you allow a list. Then you click in the source box, press F3 on your keyboard. That's the F3 function key. Select the name that you gave the reference to the customer column in your customer table, and then click on OK. And you will now have a drop down list of customers. Now, because your customer list is in a table, if I added another customer, that new customer will automatically appear in this list. So we now have our drop down list, but we want it to automatically populate these cells when we change the customer. So at the moment, it's definitely not doing that. So I'll delete the values that are currently in those cells. And I'm going to start in the first cell where I want to show address details. And here we're going to use the VLOOKUP function. Now your lookup value is the value in your drop down list, comma, and your table array is the customer list that we created on the other sheet. So you can just start typing the name you gave that customer list and it should appear in this drop down here so you double click on that comma and then the call index number is the position of the column within your customer list that contains the values you want to return so if i just take a sneaky preview i want to return the address one details and that's the second column within this table so if i go back to my invoice sheet the Call index number will be two. And then range lookup for this, you can either put false or zero in because we're doing an exact match up at zero in. 
close the bracket and press enter. And you can see now that if I change this customer, I'll get the first line of the address. So to get the other address details, I could either repeat this VLOOKUP changing the call index number each time. So the second line of the address would have a call index number of three because it's the third column. However, I don't really want to have to type the VLOOKUP into all of these other cells. So a little trick for you is you can automate this call index number. You can automatically make it increase as you copy the formula down. You can do that using the row function. Now the row function returns the row number of a reference. So initially I want the call index number to be two. So if I reference a cell in row two, it will return that two. So now when I copy this formula down, it will change the row reference to A3, A4, A5, and therefore return the relevant call index number. Now, the only other thing I need to do before I copy this formula down is lock my reference to B10, so that when I copy this formula down, I'm always looking up the value in this cell. So I can do that very easily just by pressing the F4 key on my keyboard. That puts a dollar before the B and before the 10. If F4 doesn't work for you, just type the dollars as I've got them there. Right, so if I press enter and then copy this down, you can see I get the rest of the address details. Now, one problem you may come across is where you have a blank cell within a customer detail row. For example, here, I don't have an address for entry. So if I select that customer, you can see I get a horrible zero in the address block. Now to get around that, you can use some custom number formatting. If you select all the cells that you're using a VLOOKUP in, and then right click on those cells and choose Format Cells, then go to Custom, and all you need to do in this type box is type a semicolon. Click on OK, and that'll get rid of any numeric values that are returned in that range. So you can now see this works perfectly. Now the only other thing I need to do is reinstate this border. That disappeared because I copied the formula down and it copied the formats with it. So if I select that cell and then click on this border button, it will reinstate the bottom border. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.